Test. Okay. Test. Okay. All right, there's quite a delay. <laughs> oh. Let me bring my chat over here so I can see. Hello. Alrighty. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for my live trunk show. Um, I'm Brooke and I am the owner and dyer behind Fully Spun. And uh, I'm here today to talk about all the stuff I've got new and all the stuff I've got going on. So um, we have a couple of uh, different views today. Uh, we've got all the yarn up behind me and We've also got, um, I've got a little close-up view over here so that we can take a closer look at some stuff. So thank you again for joining us, and let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to take this out, so uh, if you holler at me in the chat, if you stop being able to hear me, because I'm going to stop being able to hear myself, because there's a little bit of a delay. But yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so I think first I will go ahead and um, talk about the new colorways I've got and we can go into a close-up of them. So the, um, the first group of colorways is going to be the ones that um, were inspired by the fifth element. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is I am fully spun. I A M F U L L Y S P U N. And um, so I've been posting on there about everything I've got new. And uh, you can check it out directly also at fullyspun.com. So the first colorway I've got is called uh, Corbin Dallas. And this one is inspired by um by Corbin Dallas and like the taxi that he drives and the um let me see because my my EC just kicked back in so let me see if you can hear me uh but it's inspired by uh 
the taxi that he drives and um, just his character overall. So I'm going to bring this over into the close-up view over here. Okay. So we've got a close-up and um, okay, so the lighting isn't amazing over here. I'm going to go ahead and move this guy. So that's not um, but it'll, it'll do for now. So we've got beautiful yellows and oranges and teals and blues. And, uh, the other parts of this collection are, uh, fell from the sky, which is another really pretty colorway. And, um, that one again is is kind of inspired by some of the opening scenes of the movie where they're like they've got the chase scene going um and uh Lilu falls into his cab and it's just like the aesthetics of that scene are what I was thinking of when I came up with this uh the fifth element is like an over 20 year old movie and my mom <laughs> has made me watch it so many times because she's such a huge fan it's actually pretty funny to me um, that uh, that she's made me watch it uh, so many times. I'm just checking on checking on my audio in the stream. Um, and then next up is Super Green, which is the next. Uh, whoop, we're moving. <laughs> is the next colorway in this group and then uh was there one more oh taxi cab lord <laughs> we're just getting started and i'm already losing it a little bit and so taxi cab of course that's obvious so that all of these together are the colorways that are inspired by the fifth element Okay, so I'm gonna pop, set this down and I'm gonna hop back over to the other view. Because I might be talking a little bit fast. But yeah, so that is all of the colorways that were inspired by the fifth element. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I really, I really love this one. Um, and I uh, started to post a little bit of a behind the scenes, but I will be posting more behind the scenes of sort of how some of these are made. Because I know, uh, well, I'm sure that people are, are curious about how it goes. And um, it's also kind of fun to, to spill the beans a little bit um, <laughs> because I, uh, you know, I do this day in and day out, so none of it is super uh, shocking to me, but um, I do love to see how they come out. So one more time, that is, uh, let me set this one down, that's Corbin Dallas, which uh, all of these are going to be available on the fingering weight and the DK weight base. So um, the fingering weight base is a hundred uh, I'm sorry is 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon this is a mulesing free base sourced out of South America and spun in Italy and it's really super like squishy the DK weight base is a hundred percent superwash merino sourced the same way and I love this base because it's super squishy and spongy and like when you pull on it, it just brings right back. And um, it's very similar. So my favorite wool breed is Targi. And it's very, very springy. Even if you have just like a lock of Targi and you pull it, it'll bounce right back. And the DK weight base really behaves in a similar way. And it makes for a really beautiful stitch definition because your stitch is kind of... Um, they have some tension to them and so that you can you can see them they stand out really well from one another um, so the, the texture 
of that is really good. So those are the bases. All of these are available on both bases. And uh, the way that I'm doing this update is I do have a good amount in stock. Um, I have a couple of each color at least. But I don't know what you guys will like. This is all new as far as me selling the um, selling yarn that I've dyed in this manner. Um, I typically focus on the marled yarn, which is over here, which we'll get to later. Um, but uh, I do want, you know, I don't want people to say, oh, I love this one color and to miss out on it because I didn't dye it ahead of time. I dye full time. And so I um, am basically going to be accepting orders until we get to a certain amount that I can't complete within about a week. Then I'll pause taking orders, go fill those, and then I'll open it back up once my time opens back up. So yeah, so definitely now is the time if you'd like to get an order in. So uh, again, that's Corbin Dallas. And then there is Fell from the Sky. And um, at any time, if anybody wants to uh, interrupt me and uh, talk about color pairings, talk about which, you know, of these beautiful colors all will go well together, uh, happy to, s to stop the new colorway train and talk about that. Uh, this is your time and trying to replicate as best I can what we would normally be doing at a show, which is you asking me all the questions about, you know, where, where did this name come from? Um, thank you. Uh, where did this name come from? You know, uh, what colorway should I do this with? Would this be good for this pattern? I'm happy to answer and talk about any of those things. So um, the ha 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 247 said that, it, that uh, they were surprised when I brought these out. Definitely. Um, my mail closed in March. They're in Pennsylvania, and so they have really strict rules on what businesses can be open right now. And so um, definitely was terrifying, and uh, thankfully I, I'm still able to try to come up with something new to continue to be able to work and make income. So I'm very thankful for that, but nonetheless, I've been dying for, uh, what's this, April, for a, like a solid three and a half years professionally. And I've been doing the roving the whole time. So this is all, um, it's all definitely uh, uh, adjusting the process, coming up with a new colorway, and, uh, you know, really understanding how they come out. So um, I have done this before. I don't know how many of you were around, but what's this, 2018, I think? I dyed 2,000 skeins of yarn for the Knit Crate June box. And that was an experience. And I dyed them in this way where they were already yarn and I dyed it uh, because the um, of the price point. And so, um, yeah, that was kind of like a, a boot camp of how to dye yarn. So even though I don't dye in that manner every day, um, I do have a good amount of dyeing underneath my belt. Oh, nice. Yeah, I haven't I haven't been to fiber space in so long, but thank you for stopping by and thank you for picking up my um my yarn while you were there. So I'll get back into the colorways. So um and then super green is the last um not it's not the last one, the second to last one. <laughs> I should add some coffee before I hopped on here. The second to last one from the that's inspired by the fifth element. And super green actually also exists as a marled yarn. And I think I'm completely out of stock. But it's not a completely new colorway. It's just a colorway that I translated to the uh, this form of dyeing. The Oh, this one? Okay, this is full rainbow. So that's this colorway, and um, I have it on both the fingering weight and the DK weight bases. And so I'm also I, I'm also out of that in the um, in the marled, but it's really fun. It's got all the rainbow colors in it. 
and uh, I really like this one. Um, and of course, if I were going to translate it, this is definitely the way that I would translate it. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, Anne, if you want to see this one up close, let me know, and we can hop over to uh, to view it up close and personal or talk about um, other colorways. Hi, Tamara. Sorry to be unclear. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, but yeah, this is full rainbow. So full rainbow is another colorway that exists in the marled yarn. It's not a new concept, but it is new to this format, and I'm really happy about it, and I'm excited to knit with this one. Um, I'm excited to knit with them all, but this is definitely one of the ones that's like high on my list. And so to round out, round out the colorways that were inspired by the fifth element, here is Taxi Cab again, which is like a gold yellow uh, with uh, some black speckles to it, which will be really fun. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Yes, no, I, I really love to see um, how yarn looks when it's woven. I'm, I definitely want to try um, try weaving sometime. Uh, ha 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 247, I have not translated Orion yet, but um, next week I'll be working on the next group of like 12 or so colors. So I'll definitely will um, put that one on the list to kind of a try and come up with a translation for um, so that it can be a colorway that's available. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Tamara. <laughs> so, okay, so that was the fifth element colorways, and then we talked about full rainbow. So, uh, the next one, another one that's uh, really simple, and actually, I don't want to grab. Actually, I think this might be these might be the only ones that I actually have is black hat, white hat. So this is black hat, white hat on the fingering weight base. And um, again, it's like a really it's a really simple translation where I just really wanted to let the yarn and the dye shine with how they interact. So some skeins will be lighter or darker, um, but it's basically uh, gonna make a really cool fabric once you do uh, create something with it. Hi Lisa, yes, so I am going to still do the um, original uh, spun yarn, the Merle bases, but my mill is actually closed right now. They're in Pennsylvania and so they are not allowed to operate. So as soon as they're back open, then I will um, then I will uh, get back to creating those yarns. So uh, M. Meetsner asked, uh, what does it mean to translate yarn? So I started my business and this whole time have run my business based off of dyeing uh, raw wool roving and then having it spun into yarn. So when you do that, it comes out looking like this in a skein and then uh, the objects that you make with it will look like this where they've got the striping, every strand has two colors, and the colors just kind of go crazy. And so to translate, I just mean that I took, this is a established colorway that I already had, it's not completely new, and I just dyed it in a way where I'm using the same color palette, but dyeing it onto yarn that's already yarn in whatever way that I choose. So that's that's all it means to um, to translate yarn, and uh, I believe that right now uh, Black Hat White Hat is the only one where I have a marled example to show you, um, in addition to the postscript example. So, all right, next we can go into so. I was at Stitches West in February, and so I got a chance to visit San Francisco for the day, which was a really fun experience, and I took some pictures, and so I used some of those pictures to come up with the next yarn palettes that we're going to talk about. So, 
Uh, first is Mom, There's a Surfer. And uh, this is inspired by, I was walking back over the Golden Gate Bridge, and it was just like, the, there are the grays and blues of the water, and like, everything's so green and lush in February. Um, <laughs> and uh, there was, it was windy and cold, and there was a surfer in the water, and I was like, what the heck? Like, and there's so many rocks and things, you know, if you're not used to seeing people surf, it looks really dangerous. And then they actually, it was exciting because, like, they actually ended up catching a wave and, like, surfing on it, which was pretty cool. I'm an East Coast girl, so we don't do that out here. But um, this colorway was inspired by that moment. And so you've got your mostly your blues and grays, and um, you got your little your little pops of greens and um, rust oranges. So yeah, so that's that colorway, which is Mom, There's a Surfer. And I'm going to pop that over into the close-up, and we'll take a close-up look once we go through all of them. Uh, next is International Orange. So International Orange is fun because uh, that's actually the technical name of the color of the Golden Gate Bridge. And it's a color that's used in engineering to create things uh, that stand out from their environment. So obviously, the Golden Gate Bridge definitely does that. Um, but this for this color, I went with the um, like the rust, mostly rust orange and a little bit of um, white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, like just a little tad bit. Uh, so it's going to be a complementary palette to Mom, There's a Surfer. Um, not necessarily meant to use together, but just uh, in my brain, I just spend time exploring. And um, if I like what I come up, come up with, then you guys get to see it. <laughs> so that's uh, International Orange. And then the last one that is from... That same palette is called uh, Pier 39. And so this one is, is, is a really just a semi-solid color. And uh, I wanted to create a good amount of these to be complementary to some of the other new colorways so that you have things you can use with it. Or if you just like things simple, then uh, these are definitely the ones for you. And I apologize that I keep hitting my mic. My mic is right here. And so <laughs> I'm sorry if that is hurting anybody's ears. I really try to, like, control the hand movement. Um, but uh, Pier 39, so in San Francisco, uh, Pier 39 is, like, so they go from, like, 1 to, like, I don't remember, like, 40 or so. So there's, like, just a whole, like, over a mile of different piers. And Pier 39 has, uh, like, a bunch of, like, carnival-type uh, restaurants and tourist shops. And then they have a dock area where the um, there are no ships allowed to dock there, and it's protected for sea lions. So there were a lot of sea lions there, but apparently in August is when there really are a lot of them there. So that was an interesting thing to see. Um, and pretty cool, yeah, Karen, it, pretty cool that uh, people, that they took the time to make a protected space for them. So uh, that's what I named this colorway after, but it's really like your blue-gray ocean color. So those are all of the colors that were inspired by uh, my trip to San Francisco. And so I'm going to pop over to the close-up view really quickly so we can take a, a second look. And again, it, oh, cool, Tamara, I did not know that, um, that uh, New York had an area like that, too. Uh, which, is that in Manhattan, or um, what part of Brooklyn, or what part of New York is that in? Okay. So, here we are again with the three colorways. So we'll go in order. <laughs> We've got uh, 
Mom, there's a surfer. And I'll, I'll hold the hold the camera, so we'll be moving a bit. There's mom, there's a surfer. There is international orange. And then there is uh, Pier 39. So yeah, those are those colors and they were all inspired by my trip to San Francisco. Okay, Lower Manhattan. Cool. Okay, so the next group of colors, and we'll just set these to the side, is, let's see. So these didn't have a particular moment of inspiration. I, um, I, so, I'll take a step back. So with my marled yarn, uh, most of them are planned colorways, but whenever a group uh, or a, a piece of wool that is a particular color doesn't mat, uh, doesn't line up with its specific color, then the person who runs the mill will combine with them with others, and then we get frankenstein's. So frankenstein's are just completely random, and um, they often end up being really cool combinations of colors. So uh, this was inspired by a, sort of the first step to this inspiration was a Frankenstein. Um, and then it kind of, the yarn just kind of took over and did what it did. So I'm not dishing this the wrong way. Here we go. Here's the right one. So this colorway is called Sugar Bombs. Um, <laughs> my friend said that that's a serial and a TV show that she watches. I don't know, but um, I elicited solicited help uh, to name it. So <laughs> Sugar Bombs is what we came up with. And even not knowing the reference, it does. it is kind of like a sugary, sweet uh, colorway. So it's got some lavender to, purp to uh, bright pink to purple to blue and a little bit of black in it. And then um, the second one in that group is called Under the Desert Sun. Let me find its partner. So again, fingering weight, DK weight. And um, Under the Desert Sun, <laughs> Under the Desert Sun was named that because um, my, again, uh, asking my friends for help, they, one of them said it reminded them of a bougainvillea and how it, they fluoresce under the desert sun. And so that's a type of flower. And so um, that's how this colorway got its name. Again, it's a semi-solid pink, uh, like fluorescent bright pink to purple. I really love this particular dye color. Um, the, the dye color that's the base of this colorway because if you kind of just let it alone, it breaks which is where um, it changes the, the, as the concentration of the dye changes, the color changes uh, in more than a way that's just a value change. So like, for example, uh, say if you had black and it was less concentrated on a part, then it would turn gray, but that's just a value change. But if say if that black turned to like a bright blue or a yellow or a green, that's a break and that can sometimes be interesting. And so this one goes from like fluorescent purple to uh, to bright pink, like bright pink uh, when it breaks. So I really love this dye color. I use it in a lot of things, um, but in this one I used it to create this uh, semi-solid called Under the Desert Sun. Okay, will do. So uh, yeah, so they're very similar. Um, Sugar Bomb has some lighter spots where the color, the pinker color did not reach. And obviously Sugar Bomb also has the, um, blue and black speckling. So this would be a good, uh, candidate if you wanted to like do a fade or something like that, uh, because they are going to be very similar, um, in tone.
Alrighty. So that is Sugar Bombs and Under the Desert Sun. Okay, and then um, let's see the next colorway. So this one is again. Um, I forget what I where I came up with this one from as far as the whole palette but then it kind of grew in experimentation into me um trying to balance it out uh and I am in love with this colorway it's called Mad Honey and I think it's going to be the first one that I actually make into something thank you Lisa uh, I think it's going to be the first one that I actually make into something it's just like a flowery pink uh, with a little bit of green and a little bit of purple, uh, a little bit of, of uh, it goes from light pink to magenta. I'm in love. So growing up, pink was my favorite color. Now teal is my favorite color. But I still like sometimes really get excited about different pink colors. And so I also love the um, effect where you get kind of, you lose saturation some places where the green mixes with the pink. Uh, I really like that too. I think that this will create a really dynamic fabric. So what I want to make with it, I um have been in love with the Love Witch sweater uh, by um, Disco Stitch. I forget her real name. But um, I wanted to stripe Killer Eggplant and Brunch for my sweater to make it just like go like full 70s. For it, uh, it's a crop sweater with a huge bell, lace bell sleeve on the end. But um, since I probably won't be getting any more of the Marl Brunch for a while, I'm going to wait on that sample. And I think I'm going to do one out of Mad Honey uh, and um, still have that, like, grandma aesthetic, but just really super cute. So I'm excited about that. I love this colorway. It's one of my favorites. Um, at any given moment, all of them are likely to be my favorite. But um, Mad Honey is named after, uh, so my friends who I asked for help, they, one of them said it reminded her of azaleas and trying to find something about azaleas that just sparks my interest. And um, azaleas are toxic. And so in... In ancient Greece and I think Turkey, the uh, bees are purposely fed azaleas to make a toxic honey, which is like psychoactive and can kill you. And it's called mad honey. So that's where this came from. But I am like loving this colorway. So that's mad honey. Okay. And let's see. Uh, okay, so more stories, <laughs> more story time. So the next couple colorways, these two are a similar palette, but they're um, inverses of each other. So the first one is Levi High Jeans. So I don't know how many of you are into hip hop or um, Latin X music I don't know exactly what genre it fits in but Levi High is a song by Danny Lay and uh I was inspired by both the song is super catchy and the cover the art cover art for the single and I wanted to create a yarn that just really gave you like denim like all the colors of denim um and but still like I added the browns to it to have a little bit of contrast add a little bit of interest to your final fabric so that's how I came up with Levi High Jeans again one of my favorites and I think I want to use this one to make the ripple butt shorts which just released today very excited um and I just think it'll be kind of ironic to have like knitted butt shorts with the colorway um 
with the colorway that's inspired by blue jeans. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. <laughs> so that is uh, Levi High Jeans, and I do only have it on fingering weight to show you at the moment. Um, I thought I had a box of DK, but then I thought I had a box of both, but it was all fingering weight. So my DK weight came in yesterday, so I can't wait to dye this, and I'm going to dye some for myself to steal, of course. Um, <laughs> and then next is uh, Cafe Mel. So Cafe Mel is a similar color palette, same inspiration as far as the colors go. And uh, Cafe Mel is a... Uh, like a latte with uh, cinnamon and honey. Freaking delicious. Yes, Tamara. <laughs> uh, Cafe Mel is so good. And um, my friend and I, the one who helps me name things, uh, she, we were driving up to a show, and we stopped in this random town in Maryland looking for coffee, found this coffee shop, and they had, I think, so I think it's pronounced Miel, because it's French for honey, but um, her name is Mel, so I call it Cafe Mel, <laughs> um, and I'm dying thinking about her cringing as she watches this, um, but anyway, uh, so technically Cafe Miel, uh, which is just a latte with cinnamon and honey in it, super delicious, if you ever get bored, put some cinnamon and honey in your coffee, it would change your life. But that's this colorway. Um, again, I when I dyed it, I was just going for the color palette and trying to go with the like get the the browns going and the sort of go mostly with the with the lighter brown orange colors. But then um, once it was all done, I was like, wow, that kind of reminds me of uh, of that coffee drink. So that's it. That's Cafe Mel. So, and actually a great segue into another new color. So my last two new colorways, um, I'm going to pull this over here. Uh, need to grab. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to grab from my pretty wall of yarn. Okay, so... The first new colorway is called Adult Hot Chocolate. And this one is, I wanted, I've been wanting to add a brown to my collection of straight solids for a while. And um, so this one, I really wanted a rich, rich brown. And um, it, I was trying to come up with a name of it and it, I just thought about Adult Hot Chocolate and, um, I really love adult hot chocolate. I'm not drinking right now, but um, I grabbed this, went ahead and grabbed this one because I think these two look amazing together, and they definitely need to be something. Uh, but the um, colorway of the adult hot chocolate just really just bounces so well off of this Cafe Mel. So adult hot chocolate is a brand new color. It's just a straight brown. Um, there's going to be a little tiny bit a variation to it as far as value but you're really gonna mostly get a pretty even fabric from it um once you use it so I love this color too and then the other new colorway is not a um new uh colorway I just reformulated it so this one is called good navy and I'll leave it in this label and um, I love navy, I think, like, on top of all my other favorite colors. <laughs> navy, navy is my favorite color because it goes with everything. And I think, it to me, it looks better with things than black does because it kind of adds a little punch to the combination, whereas black can kind of sit in the background. I feel like navy adds to it. So... My other kind of dye combo for Good Navy acted up real bad um, too many times in a row, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I just reformulated it, came up with my own combination. So this one is more neutral. The other one was a, like a little bit 
purple of a navy. This one is totally neutral. Um, just like dark, 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 dark blue, very rich. And you even, um, even though it's a one step dye, you do get some uh, of the of the darker spots. It does kind of make its own variation. So that's good navy, uh, still a great option. And again, matches with everything um, and goes super well with the bright colors because it kind of gives life to the combination. So yeah, so that is um, all of the new colors. Uh, are there any questions, anything you guys want to see up close? I know I didn't go and look super up close at some of these other combinations, but happy to do that, happy to pop over, just let me know. Um, so that's what we've got in stock for uh, the new colorways. So all of them are orderable. Um, Levi High Jeans and Cafe Mel are not orderable on DK yet because I didn't have it to dye to get photographs of. So I will probably dye those tomorrow morning probably be up Sunday but if you really want it on DK weight then just email me otherwise everything you can order as many as you want and um, if you already have it in stock I'll ship it out right away otherwise it'll be about like two weeks at the most um, but really I have a lot of yarn that's super ready to die and um, we'll be able to get those out to you and so yeah so um, those are the new colorways uh, oh yeah um, so this sweater is, uh, this is the Boxy Chevrons, and the colorways are, um, oops, sorry about the mic, guys. The colorways are the Blue Hole on the sock fingering base and Berry Trifle on the sock fingering base. So, um, those are my three-ply bases, and what I mean by three-ply is that well one uh it's three ply for socks because it makes it rounder and it makes it stand up better and they also have nylon content so the and the third ply is actually a solid ply so it ends up looking a little bit different so this is the blue hole on the two ply base on the dk weight and so um overall every single Every single part of the sock base is going to have the blue to it. And sometimes you have blue with the two-ply base and sometimes you won't. And then the same thing. Uh, this is Berry Trifle. And then this is Berry Trifle on the sock base. And you can see it's a lot more pink. Um, but still, all of my raw colorways are going to stripe. Uh, this is the, I don't remember if I said the designer name, but this is the Boxy Chevrons by Sosu Knits. Highly recommend all of her patterns. Um, I am a Sosu Knits stan. Uh, definitely. This is her pattern. That's her pattern. <laughs> I have a ton of other samples out of her yarn. Um, but this one is fun because you knit the sleeves first, and then you just seam up your little part that's going to become your sleeve and pick up stitches and then just knit ad nauseum until you get sick of it. So um, instead of uh, Sleeve Island, uh, we were calling it Body Reef when we were making these. So yep, that is uh, that is that um, sweater. And actually, while we're talking about what's behind me, I realize I'm sitting in front of it, but I've got little book pins. And so I'm wearing one, and um, these are pins from a BKL. I'm wearing a lab coat because I shared a booth with my friends, the Fibrous, and um, so they we had little enamel pins created to commemorate that. So if you want a little book pin uh, to hang out with you on your bag of pins, um, I have plenty of those available. <laughs> yeah, body reef. <laughs> It definitely felt that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the Foxy Chevrons. Um, and so I think now we can go into uh, some of the other colorways. So quickly, I'll go through the solids that I have. Um, these are all just straight semi-solids. 
I designed these to pair really well with the Marled yarns. Again, readily available on fingering weight and DK weight bases. I My earring weight on the website is on sale right now because I want to get rid of my old base so that I can move to uh, a new base that will match these in texture and um, sourcing comes from the same company, same sheep. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> um so this is uh we like food names which is like a bright pink red color uh froze which is your super peachy color uh cheese with the z uh which is a a yellow orange bright bright yellow orange lush which is one which is one of my favorites Okay, Karen, um, I will take a look at it. It's called um, Adult Hot Chocolate, and if you type in the search bar, you should be able to find it, even if it's not, if you're not seeing it sort of in the full list. Uh, so try that and still let me know. If you email me or DM me, I can help you um, once I log off of the live stream. Um, Lush is beautiful colorway. Love this colorway. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I warned you I'm real silly. Um, Bluest. So Bluest has a fun story. Uh, Mel and I, again, driving down the highway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here in Virginia, um, there is, a uh, you, there's like a bajillion different vanity license plates. And there's a lot of Gadsden flag license plates, which uh, people who have that on their car, you can assume, you know, whatever. It's got a couple of different historical references. Um, but anyway, we saw this car that was this color, and the license plate was a Gadsden flag, and it said blues. And we were like, man, like... That's such a pretty color <laughs> for, you know, to have that ugly yellow license plate on it. But um, I took that and, like, made that, that into a solid color to make it something positive. So that's blues. Again, good navy. We just talked about killer eggplant. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love this. Again, I want to match it with everything. It really does go with everything. Um... My favorite, I think our favorite combo is is pairing it with brunch, uh, which we call the vegan brunch experience. Um, my friends and I, again, are very silly, but um, that's Killer Eggplant, so that's a dark, dark purple colorway. Um, you can't really tell, but um, that is Killer Eggplant. And then uh, Loyal Pup is a uh, dark 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 gray mostly black with a little bit of lighter gray spots um adult hot chocolate ice light gray and then nothing there which is white um let's see so those are the other solids i have again um if you want to see anything up close see anything together let me know i will stop uh and talk about that and then we can go over here into the mild colorways. So I only have fingering weight left in minis, and I have a good amount of DK weight and Aaron weight yarn left. So um, DK weight's down here, Aaron weight is up here. Um, and I figured, so DK weight is new as of Jan January. Uh, but all the colorways, uh, except for Mutant Tulip, are colorways that you guys already know about. Um, but I figured we could uh, spend the rest of this time to really uh, talk about um, what you guys would want to talk about. And um, I'm going to go through, come up with, uh, let's look at some color pairings to see what we like together. Um, and uh, if you want to see anything specific just let me okay so 
I'm going to hop back over into our little uh, close-up camera view. Uh, okay. And let's first... Um, so, ha 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 two four seven. I don't have um, the marled yarn in the sock weight at all. I do have uh, any of the postscript colorways, though. Um, I would have in a sweater co sweater quantity and fingering weight, but I don't have any of the marled yarn for now until my mill reopens. All right, so since it's in my hand, we can start with uh, Levi High Jeans. Super cute colorway. Um, of course, it'll go with its uh, corollary in um, stripes or different sections of the garment I think would look really cool. Uh, I think technically it's fadeable, but you probably would want some bridge colorways, but it could be used as sort of components. Uh, where'd my hot chocolate go? I just had, oh, there it is. Okay. So, again, super cute with adult hot chocolate. I think you could also pair it with um I wouldn't do that one. Hold on. Could look cute with super green. So since super green is darker, you'll get a good amount of contrast with that one. Um, and then with the solid colorways, it's going to look good, obviously, with nothing there, which is your uh, bear colorway, um, ice or loyal pup. So ice I would do, if you want a low contrast look, which is where, um, so this is high contrast where this one's light, this one's dark, so this is low contrast, where they're both kind of light, um, but that does create a very specific effect, if that's what you're going for, so it would look good with ice, would look good with loyal pup, um, ooh, would look really pretty with we like food names, I like that combo a lot. And then tomorrow, which combo would did you say you'd make a bossy chevron with? So that is uh, Levi High Jeans. So those are the colorways. Uh, I like it with cheese, but um, that's kind of your. I like it. It's a like a. Since blue and orange are complementary, it's kind of like a, an obvious combination, and they can end up looking really bright, but it's pretty. Um, so next, let's talk uh, Cafe Mel. Love this colorway. I just use it endlessly by itself. Um, love it with adult hot chocolate. It just, like makes my mouth water looking at that. I know I've said that multiple times, but I'm not going to stop. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. How does it look with this? So I think I like that for striping or like sections of a garment. I wouldn't do like a color work with it. But one thing that you can do with colors where they have a really high contrast in color types is do brioche, and that can be really pretty. 
Um, let's see if I like it with do I like it with chicken curry? No, I don't think so. Okay, so that's those two. Oh yeah. That would be super cute. Uh for your boxy chevrons. Super cute. Really like just life. I love these. And it's funny, so um I got lucky and most of my colorways came out exactly how I envisioned them. Adult hot chocolate and cheese. Yes. <laughs> Super bright. <laughs> I like that. Now that's high contrast because you may not be able to pick it up on camera. Well, you can you can tell, but the cheese is a bright color. So on top of the value contrast where cheese is light and the adult hot chocolate is dark, the cheese is also bright. Um and the adult hot chocolate is not bright. So yeah, definitely nice contrast for those. So um let's see. We can talk uh super green. We can pair that with some things. So super green, blues, um, that's a pretty combination. Um, your black, your brown, so super green does have some brown to it. So if you are a person who loves brown, uh, super green <laughs> might not taste good, but looks good, definitely. <laughs> super green will be a good candidate to go with that. Um, it also looks good with rosé. That's really pretty. Um... And I think we already already said blues. Uh, let's see, new colors. Super green would look good with really a lot of these colors. It kind of also acts as a neutral. Um, uh, international orange. Really pretty. And taxi cab. Yes, I like that. Now let me grab the. Put, uh, grab the same base to compare it with and not compare different size yarns. I love those together. Um, let's see. Again, this one, super green really does act as a neutral, so it can kind of go with anything. Uh, fell from the sky. And... That's very true. Um, it does seem like Mad Honey broken up. In fact, uh, they would all three go pretty well together for something. Definitely a pretty combination. Um, and if you want to take it a step further... <laughs> you can go with all four with brunch, add brunch to the mix. But um full rainbow. So full rainbow has brighter colors in it, but they would probably be pretty cool again as separate sections to a garment or as brioche where one can kind of shine with a bit of the other, and the other can shine with a bit of the other. Um, and then I always love to mix everything with black hat, white hat. So whether that's the marled version, so um, if we take the DK weight, <laughs> the stack of yarn, y'all, is crazy. Bye, Lisa. Thank you for joining us. Um, the uh, black hat, white hat with the super green. Black hat, white hat goes with anything, of course, but I really like what it does with bright colors because it kind of allows them to really pop uh, really well together. And, and then also, if you wanted to take it with the um, 
I think that would be a, another combination that's really cool is brioche because you kind of would get a mixed effect with the two. So let me clear the space of, <laughs> of all these colorways. And um, we'll jump back into the color mixing. Just give me two seconds. Um, so, Pier 39, I love this colorway. Uh, I don't know how many times I said that today. Um, let me try and flip it back up in a second. But I just love the brightness of it. And then... Um, so this colorway, so sometimes when you have yarn that is uh, one color and then you kind of get the hints of a second color, that's done with a dye technique called veiling. But basically, um, I actually took a really, I dyed it a bright color, took a really dark color, dyed over it, and then... What you get when you get that, you get the variation, um, and also sometimes you can change the tone. So I like this because the brightness still shines through, but you get some of the more neutral toned parts, less bright, light, lighter and darker parts. So I think these look really pretty together. So that's uh, Pier 39 and Prose. And then, let's see, again, so... Like Tamara said, <laughs> um, Prose and uh, Mad Honey are similar, but these two would be divine together. It's just a kind of a similar combination to what I use for my Foxy Chevrons, but um, those would make something really, really pretty together. Um, if you want to go... With a crazy combo, let me grab the Kingdom Loot one. Would look good with sugar bombs. Really pretty. Oop. Get back in the frame. Uh, go really well together. And then also, Taxi Cab is another combo where I'm like, this needs to happen. For sure. So I love that combo. Um, okay, so that is, uh, Pier 39. Let's see what's next. Um, oh, these two. So these two were designed together, but I still love them together. This is Fell from the Sky. Another one of my favorites. I love teal, and I really love the little teal bits in this colorway. And these two together would not only be conceptually tied together, but color-wise would make a really, really pretty combo for something. And you can go in with your three-color combo for something. And just go crazy with it. <laughs> Tamara, I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> um, okay, and so let's see. Did we get? Did everybody have their chance to shine? Um, so, Mom, there's a surfer. We'll go back in and look at this one with some of the solids. Uh. I would pair this one probably with ice for stripes. For color work, you're definitely going to lose it because there's a good amount of white. But for striping, it would be really, really pretty. Or, again, different sections of a garment. Um, super pretty with We Like Food names. Love that. 
cheese, definitely. That one pops really well. Um, and I also like it with rosé too. So that is Mom, There's a Surfer, which was an exciting moment. Okay, so um, I do have one more thing we can talk about. So those are the color pairings. Again, if uh, you haven't been on board when I was talking about colors earlier, uh, you can definitely stop me at any second if there's something that you want to see more closely. Um, Looks like we might be having a small price change. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Whew. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, as you guys may know, uh, Shay Johnson Knit and Crochet recently came out with the, um, recently came out with the homecoming cardi so that's a varsity style jacket with the mosaic stitch pattern and that was designed with my yarn and the fibrous yarn and we put together a number of kits and we do still have a good amount left um, we have small size and large size kits uh, we kind of split the sizing down the middle to try to have a good amount of options for both so we'll go through and talk about those those uh, colorways you, the, I'm sorry, the pattern calls for their worsted weight yarn and my Aran weight yarn. I actually am making one where I'm using my DK weight yarn, uh, DK weight postscript base with my um, Aran weight yarn. What this does is creates a beautiful textural stitch contrast. It makes the slip stitches stand out from each other a lot um, and adds a lot of interest to the garment. So if you wanted to um, divert from the kits that we've got, uh, then that's definitely the way to go is to use a DK weight and an Aran weight. Show live the large ones. Uh, yes, um, I can. So. Let me see if I can um, get, uh, I'm going to grab my phone, which is acting as our second camera, so I can know, tell you exactly, oops, which ones uh, we have in stock, and I can show you the sample, and um, we'll go through the samples first, and then I will grab, uh, the um grab the yarn in two seconds but let me first look and see which colorways we have in the large sizes for you okay okay so large so we have kente and diamond so kente is um Hi, Bree. <laughs> uh oh. All right, I'll move it a little bit closer, Vaughn. Um, Kente and Diamond. So that's this pairing right here. So we have that one. Uh, in the large size still available, we have Kente and Almond Bean, which. I seem to have missed, oh, there it is. Here's my sample of that. So again, same color from the marled yarn. And um, Almondine is a pretty burgundy. Vaughn, let me know if you can hear me better. Brie, leave it. Uh, we have black hat, white hat, and diamond in stock. So in the large size, so that's this one. So that one, I love this combination. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's really pretty. We have, and then we have Fire Dreamer and Aquamarine. And I will need to grab that one um, for, 
from the side for you. Uh, let me strategize the best way to get to that one. Hold on one second. Um, let me pop over. Apologize for the rustling. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Breezy. <laughs> That's my dog, Bree. She woke up from her nap. Um, this is the um, aquamarine and fire dreamer. I love this color. I'm, again, I'm a teal blue girl. Um, so that is that size, and I'm still working on the swatch for it, so I apologize for not having that ready for you to see. Uh -oh. We're unraveling here. <laughs> she, she's also trying to actively trying to steal my yarn, too. <laughs> so those are the large sizes we have. Again, we have the uh, Fire Dreamer and Aquamarine. We have the black hat, white hat, and diamond in the large size available. We have, Brie, stop. We have uh, 10K and almond bead. Uh, 10K and diamond. And that's it for the large sizes. And again, I have all of these are Aaron Waite colorways. Yes, I love almond bean. It's such a good colorway, and it's a, such a good, like, pretty, pretty wine color. And it'll make a garment that will match with everything. So you'll be able to wear it all the time, which is definitely what, what I plan to do with mine, even though mine is <laughs> mine is bright blue color. So um, those are the large sizes. And then in the small, again, we have... Uh, Fire Dreamer Aquamarine in the small. This is a large kit, but we also have it in the small still. We have Majestic and Almond Bean, which is this combination here. Um, I don't have the two. This is this combination. We have the Blue Hole and Morganite, which is a pretty pink combo. Um, black hat, white hat, and diamond in the small, uh, kente and almondine, and then we have also diamond and almondine left in the small, I mean diamond and kente left in the small. So those are all the homecoming cardi kits that we have, um, available and if you want help with coming up with a combo of one of the other marled yarns that I have that uh, we don't have the kit for I'm definitely happy to help with that um, I do have a good amount of uh, of the Aaron weight yarn left uh, if you want to put together your own combo and still have it be super stripy and fun. Thank you, Vaughn. Here, I can... Let me check the level. Okay. Hold on. We can check. Because I, did, I didn't want it to be too loud. Because this mic picks up a lot. I just turned it up just a little bit. Um, so you guys let me know, um, let me know how it sounds. Um, so yeah, so, um, I, uh, have gone through, I think, most of my 
planned content for the show, so if there's something you want to see, let me know. Um, we talked about all of the new colorways, and we also talked about, um, uh, we went through, talked about some combinations, and, uh, I think the only thing I didn't talk about, I can tell you guys the stories behind my Marl colorways, um, which sometimes are as exciting, but, um, aren't, uh, I think the, the new ones are a little bit more exciting, because I was, like, um, uh, because I was, um, trying to be really creative, <laughs> uh, and I've had some time in my hands to be really creative, so, um, we can start from the top, oh, okay, awesome, Vaughn, I'm glad you can hear a little bit better, so, we have, uh, the blue hole, so we'll have that on the Aaron weight and the DK base, this one knits up like this, um, and also my Ripple Bralette's also in the blue hole. One of my favorites, I love teal. Um, this colorway is inspired by the blue hole in Belize, which is an underwater sinkhole. And when you look at it, it's really pretty because you kind of have the island kind of around it. And then the water is like light blue and gets super dark blue as the sinkhole gets deeper. So that is the inspiration behind this colorway. We've got some of the sand colors, the ocean colors, and I in my head imagined like the wave colors as well uh we've got cherry blossom which is a relatively new colorway i love this colorway and um it was uh so actually when i first came up with very trifle i was thinking of cherry blossoms uh, here in dc that's a that's a huge thing um all the abris over there on the couch she's chewing on her teas um, so she's staying out of the way. She was just trying to steal yarn two seconds ago. But, um, cherry, so Cherry Blossom, um, I had a designer who wanted to use my yarn, but they were thinking of a colorway that had less contrast to it, but still was kind of in the vein of Berry Trifle. So that's where I came up with Cherry Blossom. And I have that on the Erin Waite base. And while we're talking about Berry Trifle, um... This is Berry Trifle, uh, which is really uh, pretty pinks and purples, uh, navy and white. And this one, I had a different inspiration. And then after I came up, after it was yarn, it really reminded me of a Berry Trifle. And at the time, I was spending a lot of time watching um, the Great British Baking Show. <laughs> so <laughs> and I feel like... A couple weeks before I had watched the tri episode where they made trifles, which is like, uh, sounds very delicious. So that's very trifle. Harvest Moon. So, I'm, you know, I'm telling you guys, um, uh, telling you guys all my, like, stuff that I just never really talk about. Um, all these things have a story, but, you know, I don't ever take the time to tell. So this one actually was inspired so I s saw this picture of this um pepper that just had these oranges and purples and greens to it it was like really weird colors um but it was like a real like bell pepper type pepper and so I really like those I initially was thinking of it for a Halloween colorway but then once I dyed it um it came out uh, more as like a fall colorway and it's just really pretty and also kind of reminds me of like the fall leaves like all the whole spectrum of fall leaves that you kind of get so that's harvest moon and that's why it's named harvest moon because it reminds me of the fall leaves so fire dreamer and ice dreamer um a couple years ago i did a collaboration with uh francois uh, of Aroha Knits, and um, as part of her magazine uh, that she was doing a design with my yarn in, um, she had a mood board, and so I was inspired to create these colors, Fire Dreamer and Ice Dreamer, from her mood board, and she actually designed two patterns um, to use each colorway, 
uh, kind of have a little bit of a different concept in each of the patterns. So that's Fire Dreamer and Ice Dreamer. Uh, they're they're um, complementary to each other, but do have some things in common. And they actually end up knitting really differently uh, from each other. So that, and I have Ice Dreamer. I think I'm out of Ice Dreamer and Aaron Weight, but I have it in DK Fire Dreamer. I only have in the Aaron Weight. I-95, this one has a fun story. So I was, um, so down here by DC, I-95 is like hell. It's almost always backed up especially going south no matter what time of day. In the summer, it's the worst because it's like you sit and you're just baking in your car. And Richmond is, so I live in Northern Virginia right next to D.C. Richmond is technically like an hour and 40 minutes away, but it can take anywhere between that and up to four hours to get to Richmond. And it's taken me four hours to get to Richmond more than once and not for a good reason. So I was sitting in traffic on I-95, and it just, you know, traffic was bad, but it happened to be a sunny, pretty day. And so that's what inspired the colorways for this is literally just what I saw. I was like, that is a colorway. Um, so um, so that's I-95, and I love this colorway uh, a lot. So this one, this is the Aaron... Uh, Aaron weight base, and I think I am out of it on DK, but I do have it on Aaron. And so, actually, I just had a thought because if you wanted to do your um, homecoming cardigan, that's the combo Lush and I 95. Oh, wow! Yeah, that sounds like a breeze. Two and a half hours if you're from Pennsylvania again. Another, like, I feel like it's just, like, any direction you go. Right, Vaughn? I could have been in New York driving four hours. Um, any direction you go around here, um, it's crazy. And then um, my mom's in North Carolina, <laughs> and we were driving, like, everywhere we went, whether we were going, like, down the street or across town, it took 15 minutes. I was like, what is this? What is this world where there's, like, no chaotic traffic? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, traffic is a mess um, in this area. Uh, so, uh, brunch is the next colorway. So, brunch, so I have this favorite spot in D.C. for brunch called Local 16. And they have, it's an Afghan restaurant, and they have um, bottomless uh, bottomless drinks with a certain amount of purchase. So the um, I was there with my best friend, and we were having brunch, and I looked at, they had all of the uh, drinks lined up. So they had pomegranate mimosa, Bellini, and regular orange juice mimosas just lined up in a row. I was like, that would be a really pretty colorway. And so a little while later, I was in the in the kitchen, you know, as one is, <laughs> um, dying. And um, I came up with brunch. And I added the white to it for water, really for color balance in the palette. But um, in my mind, it was kind of like the water. So that's a brunch, which I really love. That's one that needs to get translated because that can be really cool. Um really cool concepts and like different like I I imagine one that's kind of like mostly each of the three um or maybe even four different colorways from this one palette would could be really cool so brunch I have in Aaron weight I tried to pull out one of each colorway of what I have of DK versus Aaron so I think I'm out of it in the DK weight again if you want to pair it with something pair it with killer eggplant because that combo is everything so this one is out of your screen view so I apologize for that um spray the champagne so this one I came up with like around excuse me around um like uh 
the new year season. I was coming up with holiday colorways, so this is a new year colorway. Spray the Champagne is a Migos song, it's a rap song. Um, and I just like, I was just envisioning some of the formal colors that go to go together, like for your like kind of cheesy formal, but I wanted it to be classy. Um, <laughs> so, um, that's this colorway. That's, that's where it came from was trying to come up with something that just, you looked at it and envisioned New Year's Eve, um, and the music and the music inspiration for the name is also really cool. So that's Sprayly Champagne. Oh, and I have that on DK Way and Aaron Waite. So we talked Harvest Moon already, uh, Mutant Tulip. So Mutant Tulip, actually, I, so when I die uh, the roving to make the marled yarns, they actually, um, I dye it in stripes. So I spent months looking at the middle stripes for fire dreamer and i was like that needs to be a colorway i had it up on my list forever and so this colorway is actually taking out the um let me think about it i think it's just taking out the blue yeah because it, it has two cheese <laughs> chassis <laughs> that sounds about right <laughs> Um, taking out the blue colorway and I added white for balance and you get mutant tulip. And so, um, this one, the name came from my friends who are great at naming things. And, uh, one of them was like, that reminds me of mutant tulips. And so I, tulips are my favorite flower and I, I especially love the mutant ones, which are the ones with the little stripes to them where they have multiple colors in one flower. And I went to GW, and um, my favorite part of spring was that, you know, when you're walking down the street, they plant the daffodils, and then they plant the tulips. And so that was, like, the perfect name for this colorway. Um, but say you were ever looking to, like, use multiple marls together or fade them together, uh, these two actually have some of the same color content. So these are definitely a good match for that. Same with water, water lily mystery and ice dreamer, but I'm out of water lily, water lily mystery right now. But it was the same deal. I was looking at, kept looking at those colors together, and I was like, this needs to happen. So that's mutant tulip, and I only have it on the DK weight base. I never got a chance to dye it on the other bases yet, but it will come. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I and I Vaughn, I don't remember if it's a mutation or if it's a virus. But we liked mutant tulip as how it sounded for the name. So, um black hat, white hat. So, I am a huge fan of Westworld, which is in season right now. And um in season 1 of Westworld, one of the characters kind of we saw him in multiple stages at his of his life. And at the beginning of his life, he would always pick a white cowboy hat to wear. But then by the later part of his life, he would always pick a black cowboy hat to wear because he had turned evil. Um, and so that's where the, combin the um, concept for this came up. And also when I dye it, actually, so all, my yarn, all of my marled yarns, each skein will get a little bit of a different balance of colors. And so with black hat, white hat, Sometimes you get them a little bit more black, and sometimes you get them a little bit more white. So you can actually literally choose to have a black hat or a white hat. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's black hat, white hat. And that is in the DK weight base, and I think I don't have it in air and weight anymore. So this is Ice Dreamer we talked about. Uh, the Blue Hole we talked about. Their Trifle we talked about. Uh, super green, inspired by the fifth element, um, and I just, like, really wanted to go ham with the green color, so um, all of these, so even though the darkest color looks brown, it's actually cool because it's composed of a blue and a yellow to make the brown, so technically it's still green, um, and uh, this is another one uh, from the fifth element, 
watched that movie way too many times, but um, I had to tell my mom because I had multiple people like, oh my God, I love that movie too. Oh, that movie's so good, blah, blah, blah. So she would be proud to know that, that she's not the only one who, <laughs> who loves that movie. Um, so, but that's super green. That's where that came from. Um, and then Orion uh, is pretty simple insp- inspiration. Um, that one came from its, uh, the Orion Nebula. Um, and I actually, like, this is one of the first colorways I designed and one of my best sellers and one of my favorites. Um, and actually, often, so I kind of started doing my nails as a hobby and I often will actually paint, like, galaxy nails, like, in this color palette. Um, so, <laughs> exactly. Um, my friend said that she needed a multi-pass color, <laughs> and she demanded a meat popsicle color. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but the multi-pass should happen. Um, uh, but yeah, so I I wanted to do a fifth element collection for a long time, and so it's fun to actually finally have been able to do it. Um, I've seen it, Vaughn, I've seen it so many times, I can probably quote the whole thing whole thing um it's kind of crazy but yeah so those are the marl colorways that i have in stock again i have a good amount of dk and Aaron weight um if you're uh wanting to do a project i do have options for that so my mills close right now like i was saying earlier but as soon as they're open i will be doing the marl yarn again um and i think Probably with as much fun as I'm having doing the postscript yarns, I'll probably continue to do them. But we'll see because there's only 24 hours in a day. Um, and there's even less of those that I can stand up and die. So, um, so yeah, so that's those are the Marauder yarns. Uh, I do have, so, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's a, that line, the meat popsicle line, never really Hi, Brie. You want to come up here? Uh, okay, no, she's running away. Do you want to come up here or you want to run away? The meat popsicle line, like, never tickled me much as a kid. But <laughs> um, but I watched it recently with my um, friends because they made me watch it. And it was really funny. <laughs> like, I don't know why. <laughs> But it's funny, like, how things change from when you're a kid to watch them as an, as an adult. You're like, this is ridiculous. So I wanted to plug again my cute little Brooke pins. I still have a good amount of them available. Um, and I will, I do want to, um, yeah, I know, Bree, she's standing right here looking at me. Um, I do want to come out with some more enamel pins. But yeah, those are the ones I have. And then, um, so, uh, yeah, you just, just rewatch and then let me know. <laughs> let me know. Uh, so all the goddess in the chat is my sister. So she's been su- subjected to the same amount of fifth element as I have, um, in life. Um, so these little notions bags, so these are some small zippered bags. And uh, my friend, um, her name is Sherry. Uh, she's also a person of color. She actually is the person who applied the um, visuals to these, and she actually created the art. So this is art of my dog, River. So um, River actually has a new home now, unfortunately, but he's like, um, I consider him to be like one of my soulmates who I've met in life. Uh, and so I just... Um, I couldn't give him everything he needed, but, uh, he's always going to have a special place in my heart. Brie, stop it. Um, (laughs) now I have a mini version. River was like 50 something pounds, but Brie's eight and causes just as much trouble. (laughs) Um, so I've got these little notions pouches and then I've got white with the logo. And then on the back, it says we love color. And then I've got black with the logo and then we love color on the, on the back. So those are, um, those are hand, uh, the, the graphics are hand applied. 
by a local artist. You can support women of color. And you can get a little cute pupper. So I think when I do enamel pins, I do plan to have a river enamel pin because uh, he's just so stinking cute. Um, Brie, I don't know if she's going to get one because she likes to eat yarn too much. Oh, it is on Netflix? Oh, Lord. I should watch it, too. Get some more inspiration. Brie, are you going to come over here? You want to come here? You want to say hi to the people? Huh? Come here, Brittany. Come here. It's funny because she's never this shy. Brie. Come here. You want to come say hi? She's so confused. <laughs> you want to come say hi? Can you be a good girl? Be a good girl. Come here. Come here. You want to come up here? This is funny. <laughs> She's just like looking at me, wagging her tail. It's not a trap. Be a good girl. Can you come up here? No. Okay. I don't think she's gonna I don't think she's gonna come say hi. Until it's on her turn, then she'll come say hi. Okay, so um people in the chat, uh what is your favorite color that we talked about today? I'm really curious to hear um which ones you guys like the best, um and which ones you just like um saw and was like I need that one because I definitely it's weird I love all my colorways <laughs> like I don't know how many of them I've called my favorite but I probably have called all of them <laughs> right it's not a trap I probably called all of them my favorite at any one given time um I don't know if you can hear her but she's like right there if she if I, I could reach out and touch her but she would run away She's trying to come closer. Freebie, why are you so special? Here, but I might be able to to switch. Because I have a secret second camera. Okay. So we're going to do this this way. Oh, she's running. All right. <laughs> There's Brini. If you guys can get the, the behind the scenes chaos of me having to pull on my um all of my uh show stuff out to um uh, <laughs> to uh set up for today. Yes. Tomorrow I think those are all my like favorite favorites uh, as well. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy. So these, uh, are the first round of new colors and probably end of next week, early the week after I'll have another, uh, another group of more new colorways. So, um, this is fun and, uh, it definitely helps to have a reason to be creative because I, I guess I didn't realize like but it was definitely a push um, as far as uh, creativity and having to do something completely different from my day to day with like no notice so um, yeah this is this has been really fun so I'm excited to be able to make samples uh, of these and see how they knit up and all of that and keep coming up with new colorways. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Vaughn. Yes, I love, yeah, yeah, I really love the International Orange and that's, 
it's not really a color that I had kind of used before. I feel like I've kind of expanded my palette of colors that I've been using, really trying to use different stuff. Uh, so yeah, so definitely we'll see some, I was talking earlier about translating from Marled to uh, the Postscript, but definitely we'll be translating the other way too once I'm able to do the Marled again um, and use some of my new favorite colors. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, and I do, um, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but I'm really excited today because the Ripple butt shorts finally came out. So I'm wearing my Ripple bralette, which I made with the Blue Hole Remix, um, which is a subscription club that I had open where I was uh, changing up the sock yarn. So that will reopen again once the mill's open, like probably once once this whole ordeal is over I'll do it again when it's reliable but this is the blue hole remix and um I want to make ripple butt shorts out of Levi high jeans and probably either the my secret top or the ripple bralette dk out of the cafe meal breeze over there causing trouble so um, I'll close out. So I probably close a little bit earlier than nine. Um, just cause, uh, we've covered everything today. And so today, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, and it's been fun to actually talk about my, my thoughts behind all my colorways because I, um, I have a lot of thoughts. I uh, definitely am doing the right thing with my life right now, but, um, uh, Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. Um, oh, so after so after I took River back to the shelter, cause I um, it was a whole lot. It was a whole lot. I still regret it. I wish I could have kept him, but I think it's what was best for him ultimately. Um, I wanted another pet. I wasn't sure about another dog, so um, I was looking at cats, but I didn't get a cat because I dyed yarn, and I was like, I don't want to risk, you know, having to fight with an animal over yarn, and cats, you can't keep them out of things. Like, cats, if they want it, they're going to get in it, and so um, one day, I saw Brie on the website, and I was like, oh, she's the right size. Let me go meet her and brought her home and all that. This child went straight for some yarn. I was, I think I was on the first day I had her out and we were, we were kind of hanging out and I was knitting and she started chewing on my yarn like it's a toy. And I was like, excuse me, <laughs> ma'am, <laughs> what are you doing? So... Somehow, um, I ended up with, I think, the only dog in the world that loves yarn. If it's in her reach, she's going to grab it. That's what she was trying to do earlier. She was trying to low-key steal some yarn. She has gotten plenty of yarn that I have had to set to the side as I'm going to have to do something with it later. But, um, yeah, so it all, it all definitely <laughs> stays out of her reach. But um, she loves yarn. So that's kind of um, ironic that I didn't get a cat because of the yarn. And then I got a dog that loved yarn. But I like Brie. Uh, she's sweet. She's over there chewing on some cheese right now. So she's being a good girl. Um, and actually, also, she was supposed to be four years old. But in her uh, vet paperwork, a vet that did her dental work said she was one and she actually was more like one because we had to potty train we had to behavioral train and we're still working on it so she's getting um older now and calming down a little bit she'll use her potty where she's supposed to um so yeah so that's a whole whole ordeal working with her um but yeah uh, I haven't. So I've read that that is a good way to like 
shift them away from what you don't want them to mess with. But I also don't want her to get used to thinking that it is okay to chew on yarn. Like, I don't want to encourage that behavior. Um, no, no, Vaughn. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. She's not chewing on the yarn. She's chewing on, like, a piece of hard cheese. It's a dog toy. It's her toy. Um, but also, whenever, like, I bought her sweaters and stuff from the store, and she always destroys them. So, I don't know how long it would survive. I'm, I'm probably would, would need to get a, um... Why is my face green? That's weird. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Y'all didn't tell me my face was green. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, Oh, I totally forgot. Oh, she but she chews up everything that that belongs to her. So, um <laughs> So yeah, um I don't know, but I might, I I've thought about getting something like really wooly that maybe could get felted so it'd be harder for her to chew through or like easy to repair. Um she also might finally be at the age where she can like love something without destroying it um which we know you know takes time in dogs but uh we'll see i'll think about it <laughs> it's getting green again oh my god the camera does not like me i think that's the camera saying uh sis it's your time to go it doesn't like my highlighter today it's jealous um yeah it's green again <laughs> Yeah, she definitely, but she's good about chewing her toys, and I gave her, she has plenty of things to chew, um, as long as I keep the yarn out of her reach, and she doesn't have access to any strings or any shoes, she's pretty good, so, um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna, um, call it an evening. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I think it is my highlighter. Um, that's okay. Um, the camera is just a little bit jealous of my shine. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Thank you so much. I did see some orders coming in as we were talking, so thank you so much for placing your orders. And um, if you guys have any questions, um. I'm always here to help you and happy to send you photographs of whatever um, and help with pattern recommendations or how is this going to look, things like that. I'm more than happy to help and I appreciate all of you guys. So I hope you guys have a great evening and a great rest of your Friday night and um, I will talk to you next time. <laughs>